I'm Diane Henson, I'm founder and owner of Creative Family Connections. This is Michelle Missler. She's one of our case managers and associate attorneys. And as I said this morning, we are an integrated law firm um, right in the metropolitan DC area. So what I mean by integrated is that we are a law firm that does everything that an agency does as well. So I don't have to put on my hat one day saying I'm a law firm and the next day saying I'm like a liar, one day saying I'm an agency. We do everything. So from the beginning, we can figure out both the legal part and the agency part. But more importantly, from your perspective, you get all the protections that you would get with working with lawyers and law firms because we are heavily regulated law firm uh, agencies or not. Your money's protected, things like that. So instead of standing up here and telling you, okay, here are all the reasons why you should come to us or how we work, because really that's going to take more than 20 minutes to, <laughs> a lot of noise going on over there. Um, that why, why it's um, what we do, we'll give you complimentary consultations if you get to the point where you are interested in a hear more about our firm and our process. What I thought I'd do is something more general um, and just talk to you about tips of how to choose an agency so that it would be more general and then also talk a little bit about the map that we talked about this morning. Um, and then, as I said, we can always be more specific. Does that sound good? Great. Um, so our overall goal is to make your surrogacy journey as happy and stress-free as possible. Um, but at the same time make it ethical and legal. And hopefully that should be everybody's goal, but that is certainly our goal by intertwining that happy, stress-free, and ethical legal. So I, I would say our first tip would be um, you want to get proven and legal, proven legal expertise and experience. In other words, um, you, whatever your particular situation is, you want somebody who can guide you through that. Surrogacy is complex, and don't let anybody say to you, surrogacy is easy. It is complex, but the idea is you shouldn't have to worry all the details. Um, you want somebody to guide you through the details. You don't want to be anyone's learning curve. You want someone who's been through it before. So you want to get a sense as to what other kinds of clients they have. You don't want to be somebody's first um, same-sex couple, because those are unique. Um, and different clients have different um, needs and interests and, and, and all that. So if any of you are international, you want to know about that, that kind of thing. Um, so the other thing, the next thing would be what happens to your money. Um, okay, so a law firm is very regulated as to what happens to your money when you pay, because everybody has you pay in installments, but do you get your money back if something happens? So a few months ago, we had some clients, it was a same-sex couple, and one of them got really sick, um, which you know was really a shame, but they just said it's the wrong time for us to do surrogacy. And we understood that, we loved them, they loved us, but we could get it, it was not a good time. They had to concentrate on, on getting him better. And so what happens when you pay a lot for money is it goes into the special legal trust fund and we only transfer money over each month um, the amount that we earn and it's set forth in our standard terms of service. So if at some point you need to stop your journey because you don't know what's going to happen in your life, but everything that's still in that trust fund, like where, let's say we're typically we transfer 2,000 over a month as we're doing your match, uh, your search, everything that was still in that trust fund was easy. We just returned to them. We're on really good terms, and I have no doubt that if you know things are good, they'll come back. One thing you want to ask your anybody your, your is what happens if we have to stop. Most agencies have a no money, no refunds, whatever, and. You know, we all hope everything just goes through, but something you want to talk about. Um, so the next question, Michelle, why didn't you talk about? Oh, well, they let you work. Well, they let you work with any clinic you want, um, which is a great question. So we're willing to work with any client. I think a lot of agencies are, but then some might not be. And um, we'll work with any clinic that you want to go to. We can give you suggestions. Um, but that's an important choice for also you to make. And so um, 
you know, we wouldn't force you to go one place or another. And, you know, sometimes people have to switch clinics for reasons and we'll support you in a switch. So, um, you know, we'll work with whomever you want to work with and that should be, you know, your choice. <laughs> um, and there shouldn't really be any monetary ties together and you should just kind of be able to choose who you feel comfortable with and who you continue to feel comfortable with and who offers the services that you want to offer. Right. Because each clinic has pros and cons and services that they can offer that um, that another clinic might not. They have different regulations for their egg donor banks. They have um, different theories about transferring one or two embryos. They have different selections of, you know, their success with frozen and fresh. And so you have to look up all those things into where your mentality is when you're choosing a clinic and not just an agency. Right. That's a big um, range of success among IVF clinics. They range from a 40% to an 80% range. And so you know, we want you to go with one that's going to have that 80% success range. And we have no financial ties to any IVF clinic. So our goal is just to help you get to the best place possible. Yes, you have a question. Yeah, do you endorse the criteria by which men with having babies ranks the fertility clinics? Is it complete enough in your view? Well, some of the questions I think are, um, are, are my clients have told us are a little bit hard to answer, but overall, um, I think it's, it's, you know, it's hard to do, but it's it's okay. But yeah, like I know, um, like I'm the cost one. People say, why are we high? But it's because, like, the way the question's asked is, <clears throat> when some of our clients have gone to one clinic, <clears throat> they're not successful, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll move to another clinic. And then when they answer that question, they give their total cost of every place. And so they've got this like gigantic amount of money. And then when I was telling Ron this, he said, oh, well, they should have just answered it for that one cycle. And I'm like, oh, well, they just gave this you know, $250,000 amount. And that totally has skewed our results kind of thing. And I know that you know, if somebody doesn't like the medical results, sometimes they'll just put in a bad review. And there's nothing we can do about that. But that, you know, I don't. Kind of like shooting the messenger, but for the most part, I think it does give you some, um, you know, some reference. If somebody's always at the top, always at the bottom, obviously we like that people like our services. But I think that's important for you to also check out on an individual basis. You should ask a, um, any agency for the names of both existing clients and former clients, and if they're not willing to give those to you, then something's wrong. Um, and I think that's a really good idea. Actually, some of our um, people have made really good friends that way too, and it's you know it's a good thing to do. So, and I think it's a really fantastic service though that they do it. Um, so the next question <clears throat> is, will your um, agency will let you work with a surrogate from wherever you want? That's not a good thing. <laughs> So the reason is because, uh, especially those of you from New York, is we can't use New York as your basis because surrogacy is, contracts are void in New York. So we have to use a nexus of some place. So it's got to be where your surrogate lives. And um, so we have done the map that is used by everybody in the industry, basically, as to where surrogacy is OK and not OK. So. You do not want to be matched to a surrogate from a state where surrogacy is not legal and where it's not gay friendly. Because if you do that, if you work with an agency and they match you and you get through the process and then all of a sudden they bring in a lawyer, you're going to go, what? We can't do it here? That's not going to make you happy. Or if they say, well, it's okay, she's going to go next door to this state, well, babies have a mind of their own. So I always say plan A is good, but plan B has to work because we get these emergency deliveries and if plan B actually is an illegal state that is just not even acceptable because she can just stay there and then she can void the contract etc cetera, etc cetera. you know that's what we're trained to do right think of worst case scenarios so this is too little for you to see but if you go to surrogacymap.com um, it'll jump you to or to our website either one um, and if you pick one of our cards it'll give you the site 
So this is actually new this year. We it just went up yesterday, hot off the presses. Presses. So you can map, You can just guess if you can see even from there which one is the map with. Um, we tried to do apples and apples, so one of these is for married hetero couples and one is for married same-sex couples. And one of these has a lot more red, like red light states, and one has a lot less red and more green. Which one is for the same-sex couples and which one is for the hetero couples? But the good news is <clears throat> there's still a lot of green states where you can actually get a pre-birth order in a single step with both your names and then you could get both of you on the birth certificate. That was the criteria for being a green state here. So even the light green states, if you can get it, it may be post birth, and the teal states, you can do it, it just takes two steps. So with some creative um, legal work, we can pretty much cover the country. Um, yes? And so that's because, like, so a second parent option then is, uh, I mean, I know I realize it's kind of another step and kind of another waiting. Is it also quite expensive then to do that? In no, it it's not. Works? And it's actually, for belts and suspenders, it's recommended as best practices because if you've got, um, for the, for the non-bio dad, you, right now, until same-sex marriage is, is recognized in the entire country, what you want is for your rights. If you're the non-bio dad, you want your rights to be protected everywhere. Not just for your sake, but for the child's sake. So that your child has her, his rights protected vis-a-vis -vis the non-bio dad. And so even if you get that parentage order, parentage orders, even though they are final judgments and theoretically should be accepted everywhere, they're not always. So to get that, and the birth certificate is what you'll use when you go to school and register and all that, but it doesn't confer legal rights. So for best practices, it's actually good to have that anyway. So that's why these teal states aren't horrible because the best practices is to do that second step anyway. And you can come back to New York and do a second parent adoption, even though you couldn't do your underlying surrogacy here. Yeah, we've definitely done that for clients. But, but Texas is red. Texas is red because you can't get on the you can't get both of you on the birth certificate. But if Texas goes hopefully the way other states have for same sex marriage, the statute there says you have to be married, and so it may flip like that. Like Utah on October sixth, when the Supreme Court you know put, said these these states have to go same sex by not accepting the appeal, Utah has same-sex marriage, and Utah has a statute. The statute says you just have to be married. When they wrote that statute, they probably never in their million years thought same-sex <laughs> marriage would go into effect. So as of that day, Utah became green. It's like the coolest thing. <laughs> the irony being now, you can do surrogacy in Utah, but not in New York and not in D.C. <laughs> yes, and you can do it in one step pre-birth. <laughs> So this map is meant as a resource, but that's also the reason that you hire an attorney before you matched. Because you can think about this, but don't get you bogged don't down. You have to figure it out. You'll have an attorney who will help you figure it out. Exactly. And um, the post-birth most of the time is not very expensive um, no. because it streamlines in a lot of states, and so it's more of a formality, right. and no, you go to study. It's like a second parent or a step parent. Like yes, exactly parent. what it's like. And in, in most fact, places. it will be called that in some states when you're married. Yeah. Sorry, you had a question? Is it more difficult for unmarried gay couples to navigate this process in terms of surrogates choosing them and just the legalities of all of this? So you mean single or if you're unmarried a couple? Unmarried couples, is that? Um, there are some, a lot of states now that say if you can get married, you must get married. And that's true whether you're heterosexual or same sex. It's, but it's state by state and actually we try to break that out on our when you click on this map, it's interactive. You could click through, and that's one of the questions we asked both for. Um, but yeah, so now there's a lot of states have this view that if you can get married, we want you to do it to protect the rights of the child, and it's it just varies. Like Maryland doesn't care, but Utah does. 
So just for this purposes of this map, just to show it, we did uh, Mary does do apples and apples, but some states don't care. But if for, you also <laughs> have lots of options. There are lots of options. We try to work with what is your view of family look like and work with you. Yes. Also, since you guys seem like yeah, so, so I've heard that Illinois has particular like that their laws are also more protective for the surrogate in some ways. There's some legal protection for the surrogate in Illinois. Do you know about that? Well, are, there, are there states where there's uh, differences in terms of sort of the yes, ethics or the legal sure. For the That's a really good question. I think it's fair to say that if you work with a a law firm agency that's doing best practices, you're going to get those same protections okay. anywhere. What they've done in Illinois, there are like five states on the big map that are like where they put those into law, is what they've done is they've taken the best practices that a lawyer who's a member of um, the American Academy of Reproductive Technology Attorneys would do anyway, and they put them in their law to make sure that everybody does them. But I think if you work with an attorney who does that anyway, you will have those. So those are like the surrogate has a lawyer. The surrogate has to have independent counsel. The you know the money is held in, in a separate escrow account. All those kinds of things. Exactly. So that's not. So there's not necessarily benefits. Like if you're concerned about sort of the ethics and the sort of protection of the surrogate, that's less a concern than just having an agency that kind of. And, right, and who you're working with exactly. So that's one way that Illinois is making sure that everybody there does it, but who you work with will also be a way to make sure that that's protected. So you, would ask, so, so you sort of ask, do they follow, what did you say, sort of best practices for the um, lawyers? The, the, right, the, it's the American Academy of Reproductive Technology Attorneys. Um, okay. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's just best practices in terms of things like that. So. But yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, but yeah, these are all really good questions. Um, and, and as I say, talking with existing and former clients and, um, and looking at sort of how, and seeing whether they have repeat circuits is a really fantastic way to find out. Like we have five, well we have seven, eight now, repeat surrogate journeys going on right now. Seven, five of those are with the same parents, which I think is extra special because, and then or we do let, if the parents and the surrogate are the same, we actually don't charge a, a match fee. It's our way of actually encouraging you to have a fantastic first journey because then everybody has a good incentive. Um, but that's always really a good sign. If a surrogate isn't treated well, she won't go back to the same agency. So. Um, and then also a good thing to do is ask how a, sur uh, how a surrogate is screened. Like, do they just talk to her on the phone? Do they just have her fill out an application? Do they talk to references? Do they do an in-home interview? I mean, we do an in-home interview. We'll have our case member fly all over the country because somebody can come into your office and um, clean themselves up, get that smell of smoke out of their clothes. but. You walk into someone's home and you can meet all of her support network, see if it's she's got the good judgment to clean up the dirty clothes. And we want you to be able to feel good about going to the neighborhood and the home. And she can have toys on the floor because she's going to have children. That's one of the requirements. But you'll you know learn fast enough <laughs> that it's hard to keep up with the toys, but you can pick up the dirty clothes. It shows good judgment. Uh, so, um, and then what if your surrogate fails, right? Um, I mean, it goes without question if she doesn't pass her medical or site screening, but what if she passes her medical and site screening and then something happens? Um, that's something you need to find out. And um, because in some ways the agency has done their work, right? You, and so, but it presents a conundrum. So. Um, with us, you, um, everybody is part of our gestational carrier guarantee program where you get a free match. And if you want to have complete assurance, we call your sleep at night, then you can pay for a small fee, it's like 5500 so you can get unlimited free matches. But everybody is in that first one, so we don't want to make it a big deal to have to pay extra for it. 
And then the, what kind of continued support is there for your surrogate and for you once the match is made? I mean, there's a huge spectrum of, of agencies out there. Do you get matched and then are you then said, okay, come back when it's time to go to court? So um, Michelle Latt is one of our case managers and she can tell you what, how often she will talk to our surrogates and also to you to let you know what's coming up next because you're like all on overload today. Like how am I going to remember all this, right? Yeah. So so our, our method and you know some people might not want as much, although usually it's beneficial, um, is to follow the surrogate and you all the way through. And so once you're matched, you're assigned a case manager and she's checking in with you and your surrogate at least once a week. Um, and that's making sure, you know, that the screening appointments are set and that she knows what to expect and that you know what to expect. And then when you forget the next step, you send us an email or we send you an email saying, okay, time for next steps because the amount of information you're getting today and just even once you start the journey, you know, you can't remember it all and that's what we're here for. So we really like to develop a good relationship with our client and our surrogate and then have the same person supporting them generally because, um, you know, if there's like a little issue like they mentioned in the um, program, it happens, you know, you read on Facebook that your surrogate's eating candy on Halloween and you're not so thrilled about that and then, you know, we try to play a support role to you too saying, you know, I think one piece of candy is okay. But, you know, if she seems like she's overdoing it, then you tell us, and then we say we agree with you, and, and we're going to help you move through this. So we can always kind of play the bad cop. Yes. Um, you and never for all those, have to be the bad cop. Ever. So that the surrogate, you know, doesn't think that you're telling her something bad. You know, we're, we're the rule maker. So, you know, we can bring it up in a way that kind of, you know, makes it not so harsh. Um, and then same thing with her, if something's bothering her, um, you know, a little thing comes up all the time and, you know, you learn how to deal with them and it's good practice for being parents. Yeah. yeah. But, or with travel. It'll come up with travel because we're going to put travel restrictions on what state she can go into from like 24 weeks on because that's sort of beginning of viability. So, mm -hmm. right, we're not going to let her take a trip to New York, um, but we're the ones. If she forgets and mentions something, let's say she mentioned it, usually they're really good about asking us because that's the way it's written in their contract. But if she asks or if it happens to mention it to you, you don't have to say, whoa, you can't do that, right? You are always the cheerleaders. You don't say that. So you say something to the case manager who's talking to her or texting with her, whatever her method is, every other day or every week. And then she'll bring it, really good at bringing it up as part of her own. So, wait doing so, you know it'll be the way she breaks and it won't come like well Michael told me and blah 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 and then so and then we're the ones who'll have to say I'm sorry you know you can't do that because if you don't do preterm labor in New York it is not a good thing and then once we explain it to her they get it you know they really they're doing this to change someone's life and to help you so they don't want a bad ending but sometimes it takes us to remind them so uh, as I say, if somebody has to have that awkward conversation, that would be us. And so yeah, so we, we're staying with you all the way through. We're going to talk to the hospital. We're going to talk about getting a room for you. We have the baby with you. She can be down the hall, paddle up in her slippers. And so those are just some of the things that we could go on, but I see we're past our time. So if anyone has any questions, we're good. But otherwise, um, yeah, feel free to uh, take our materials. Um, so on the back of those, um, well, there's the map link, but there's also an email address. It's info at creativefamilyconnections.com. Also, I'm um, Michelle at creativefamilyconnections.com and Diane's Diane at, so we're pretty accessible once you learn one person's email address. Um, but if you email the info at um, and you're interested in setting up a free consultation, we can do it um, by Skype or um, you know, if you want to come down to DC, we're you know real easy, accessible. Sometimes we're here um, to really kind of go over the the details um, and answer specific questions that you guys may have. You said you guys are in Maryland, just across the. We are line. inches from the line. We're right above the Friendship Heights Metro, if you know DC at all. But it's um, yes, yeah, I told the DC Council I helped work on the legislation, and so as I 
let off the witnesses, I said, we are as close as you can get to DC without being in it, because it just gives us flexibility to represent all the people in DC as well and not worry about it. So we're basically in DC, but. <laughs> so yes, thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming.